Okay, Dr. Mindy here. Let's talk about megadosing vitamin C. Is it helpful? Is it not worth it? What are this, what is science showing us and how much do we actually need to megadose with? And are there foods that we can use to megadose with vitamin C? So on this video, I answer all of those questions. So stay tuned. Okay, on this video, we are gonna talk about vitamin C. So you've probably heard about a lot of the theories out there that megadosing with vitamin C can really help boost your immune system. So I wanted to go diving into the science and really understand why does megadosing vitamin C help you so much? Who should be megadosing vitamin C? How do you make it more bioavailable if you are gonna megadose with vitamin C? And as always, I love to ask the question of, can I get my vitamin C? Can I get my nutrition from foods? So I wanna dive into this with you and help you think through this for yourself because there is an incredible opportunity here for us to see some really amazing natural uh, nutrients that the nature has provided for us that will boost our own immune system. And I, I did a video on vitamin D, so go watch that video because we know the sunlight is an incredible immune booster and we do know that vitamin C is an incredible booster as well. So with that in mind, let me dive into some of the science behind vitamin C. First thing I want you to think about, with vitamin C, what it's doing is it activates T helper cells. So T helper cells are like the army of your immune system that when, they're, when the immune system recognizes that there is a virus or a bacteria that has invaded the body, it will activate the T cells. They are like the army that goes out and grabs those pathogens, grabs those foreign invaders and goes after it and kills them. So when you are taking vitamin C, you are activating the proliferation of those T cells, which is incredibly helpful. But it doesn't just end there. There's another piece to this, and it will also activate your uh, natural killer cells. So think of your T helper cells and think of your natural killer cells as being a, in uh, working together like a team. So it'll send more T helper cells out to find those viruses, to find the pathogens, the foreign invaders, and it will allow those T helper cells to bring those pathogens, those foreign invaders to the killer cells so that the killer cells can kill them. So it's working with both pieces of that immune system. So really cool because it's not just taking at, coming at it from one angle, it's coming at it from two angles of your immune system. But it doesn't end there. There is actually another really cool benefit to vitamin C, and that's that it creates a protective barrier around your cell so that things like pollutants and environmental toxins and uh, you know, uh, synthetic chemicals don't get into the cell and destroy the cell. So it can be really helpful, especially in heavy metal uh, D to our toxicity. It can block the entrance of these toxins into our cells. So three really, really cool functions of vitamin C that we wanna lean into, especially at a time right now where we're worried about viruses, we're worried about our, our own immune system. Vitamin C can be a true hero for us if we are mega dosing with it. And I'll talk about the amounts of vitamin D, uh, C here in a moment. The second question I had to ask myself when I put the research together for this video was, if I tell you how, what the dosage is that you should take for vitamin C, will it have the same effect on everybody? And the answer to that is actually no, that there is two organs that really help with the absorption of vitamin C, and that is your gut and, the, and, the, and your kidneys. So stop and think about this for a moment. If you have a lot of gut dysbiosis, if you are uh, eating a lot, of, a lot of processed foods, a lot of GMO filled foods, a lot of foods that are non-organic, um, if you know you've been on a lot of round of antibiotics and there's a lot of gut damage, then in order to get the most out of your vitamin C, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're adding in a good probiotic. 
or that you're adding in some fermented foods. You wanna work on rebuilding your microbiome as you mega dose with vitamin C. Now you've not only increased the level of vitamin C, but you've also uh, created an environment where that's, that vitamin C will become more bioavailable. Second organ that deals with the absorption of vitamin C are your kidneys. So those of you that have had high toxic loads, those of you that know you have been exposed to heavy metals, um, those of you that just know your toxic bu bucket is very full, you're gonna wanna use some kidney support. You're gonna wanna drink a lot of water with your vitamin C. Like you wanna nourish those kidneys. Couple really good ways to nourish the kidneys is you could take a kidney supplement. We use K-Kidney from Systemic here in our office. You could try castor oil packs on your kidney to get some nourishment in there. Um, and you can just drink a ton of water as you're mega dosing your vitamin C. But in order to make vitamin C more bioavailable, you're gonna need to make sure that you strengthen those organs. Now, if I'm watching this video and I'm thinking, okay, I want, to, I want to support my viral immune system. I want to mega dose with vitamin C. I don't know the state of my gut or my kidneys. It would benefit you just to be, just do something as simple as take a probiotic and drink a lot more water than normal as you're mega dosing with vitamin C. That would be a really smart move to do. So that's kind of how I interpret the, the, those two organs. Okay, now, third thing. Um, who is the most vulnerable for, vi for vitamin C? This was another, uh, and I'm gonna put all these research in here. They found that your bioavailability of vitamin C is reduced if you have an increase in stress, if you are uh, uh, drinking alcohol every day, if you're smoking, when you have a fever, when you ha are having the symptoms of a viral illness, when you're using antibiotics, when you're using painkillers, anti-inflammatories, um, or any heavy metal toxicity. So with that, you have to look at those symptoms and, or those stressors and ask yourself, how many of those have you been uh, under? A lot of us are under stress right now because of what's going on in the world. Um, we also know that there's a lot of people who have been under antibiotic use. So for you, and if I put that list, and I'll put, again, I'm gonna link the studies here in this um, video, but for you, if you look at that and you go, yeah, I've had a lot of toxicity, yeah, I've been under a lot of stress, yeah, I've had a lot of antibiotics, then it becomes even more important for you to mega dose because you may be deficient in vitamin C right now. Okay, now let's dive into how much you should take. Okay, so I've got some studies for you as always. Um, the first thing I thought that was really interesting is I wanted to know, well, how much did Linus Pauling take? So he was the founder of vitamin C and he actually, there's some interesting stories about him online. He got to a point where he was taking over 18,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day. I'm not recommending you do that, but his recommendation for the common cold was he encouraged Americans to consume 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day. So I'm gonna start with that as a really good dosage. That's three grams or 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C um, for just the average person. If you're under more stress, if you've been under more antibiotic use, if you have heavy metal toxicity, I would encourage you to go up to as much as six grams a day or 6,000 milligrams. In the vitamin C dosage world, we typically say that you keep uh, increasing your dosage by 1,000 milligrams until bowel tolerance. When you start getting really loose stools, that's usually about the moment that you sit tight and you just take the dosage that is giving you right at that edge of giving you loose stools. That's how you know what the appropriate dosage is for you. And then as the stools firm up, you can go to higher dosages in the, in the days following. Now, I found another really cool study showing that um, this was a two populations. They had a control population and they had a test population. The test population or the control population was, they all had symptoms of a cold and they were given and treated with pain relievers and decongestants. The test population was treated with hourly doses of 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C for the first six hours and then they did three times a day of 1,000 milligrams. So they did, in total, they started off with 6,000 milligrams done over an hourly dosage, a thousand at a time for the first six hours, and then they went to 3,000 
a day for the following days. And here's what they found. So they have two groups of people. They've got the people who are taking the decongestants and the painkillers for the cold, and they've got the people taking their vitamin C dosage. And so what they found was that the group, check this out, the group that took the vitamin C uh, only. They didn't do the painkillers. I want to give you the exact quote here. They reported flu and cold symptoms that decreased by 85% when compared to the group that just did the pain relieving and, and decongestants. So there you have it. Like vitamin C has this incredible ability to support our immune system. The science is there. Um, and it, it, most of us need to be mega dosing anyways because of our stress levels. Um, so really important that we do it, especially right now at a time of viral immunity being something that was all on, uh, uh, on our minds. Now, what do we do about food? What foods can you eat? Now, here's one of the, the problems. I will list the foods out for you guys in a moment. But one of the, the challenges that we have with food is that um, you just can't get enough of it. And we don't also, how is your body absorbing it? But having said that, again, the name of the game right now is let's mega dose with vitamin C. Let's bring up our immune system the best that we possibly can. So um, some of the foods that are really high in vitamin C, um, citrus fruits, of course, right? So oranges, uh, green peppers, red peppers, strawberries, tomatoes, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, turnips, and leafy vegetables. So you should be, as we move through this time right now, you should be looking at your plate and asking yourself, how many leafy greens am I adding in? How many vegetables? How, much, how many of the Brussels sprouts and broccoli? We'll put a list in the notes here so you can see exactly those, those uh, vegetables that you should be leaning into. Um, but you can really come at this from a food way and you can come at it from a mega dose way. And if you're doing both of those things and you're feeding your good microbiome and you're supporting your kidneys and you're getting sleep uh, and you're reducing your stress load, this can be an incredible tool for boosting your immunity. So I give two thumbs up on mega dosing vitamin C. Let me know if you guys have any questions on that. We are discussing immunity in really deep detail in my Reset Academy. So if you wanna come join us over there and get support through this time of crisis, we're doing that in the Reset Academy, giving people solutions for powering up their immunity, not just staying in a state of panic and fear. So as always, I hope that helps.